All right. Welcome to J Talk. It's Josh and John. We are going to be talking about this training facility and how it has come to be, all the challenges around it, all, all the things that it's been through. The evolution of fitness forward. You know, I'm evolution, curious. Maybe. I'm curious to hear all the details because you've been you've been in the fitness game for what 15 plus years. It's been now. Yeah, it's been a long time training yeah. people. Training people for 13 plus years, training myself for, shoot, 19 years about. It's crazy. And a lot of, a lot of things have changed. A lot of things have changed. And uh, yeah, man, I, I got into training when I was, as far as training other people, I got certified and when I was 19 years old. Mm. And I remember... I just wanted to do it for myself. Like I just wanted to get certified to train myself because I was, I didn't feel like I was a hundred percent knowledgeable in the gym and I wanted to learn more about how to train myself. And when, when you, when you started training yourself, was this the first time you were diving into fitness or were you working out before you decided had, to get your, yeah, I had been working out like my dad pressured me to start working out when I was like 14, 15, but I never wanted to. And so I was just like off and on. And then I was really consistent about going to the gym when I was like 16, 17 years old. Hmm. And I had been going for a couple of years and it was awesome. Like I was seeing some results. Like I was working out with a couple of buddies in the gym and I just, I, I loved it. It was great. I, I was gaining some muscle and I was always like the skinny kid. And I didn't, I, I didn't really, I, I was kind of insecure uh, and not not confident in myself like in, in so many different ways i was just like an uber nerd and training like opened me up like as uh, a person and i'm sure that it opens up a lot of people and it's been so life transforming for me so I, I wanted to learn more about it i was like i want to learn more about different muscle groups like i want to just train myself really well and i want to yeah. do it right so I got certified through NASM, like everybody, like one of the most yeah, world-renowned companies, NASM, National Academy of Sports Medicine. Yes, that's what it oh. is. <laughs> and I got, I, I, I started, you know, just training my ways through them, and they, they have got their fundamental setup of how to train people, like their mm -hmm. OPT model, mm -hmm. and uh, it was fun. I loved it, and uh, I actually enjoyed it so much that when I moved here to San Diego. Uh, I just decided that needed to be my full-time job. Like I was training some people a little bit, like not, not official, like I wasn't getting paid, but I was going to the gym with people and working them out. And it was always so much fun. And when I moved down to San Diego for college, like, and I was like, this, this is going to be the perfect job. So I went to a ton of different gyms and just started applying and 24 hour fitness you know, I got hired at 24 hour fitness. Good I'll never forget 24 it. Hour fitness. Good old 24, man. My first experiences at 24 hour fitness. I remember I had like three interviews that day at different 24s. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of them was like super nice and cool. Like my first interview, uh, Matthew Lombardi was his name. <laughs> and he was so cool. Uh -huh. And I, I wanted I wanted to stay at that gym already. And I had two other interviews. So I got I had these other interviews and both of them, these other interviews weren't that great. Like I just didn't feel the vibe, you know. One mm -hmm. of them was talking trash about his other employees. And I was like, Oh, I wouldn't want to work for this guy. And then he's like, Oh, we gotta come back for a second and third interview. Oh, whatever. So I got hired at the at 25 Hour Fitness downtown San Diego. Man, that was a that was a long I actually, time ago. I used to work. I used to work out at that twenty four hour fitness. Did you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, that thing is like it's like the worst twenty four. <laughs> I love it, but man, it's like you're in a dungeon. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like small. It's like one of the smallest ones in San Diego, but it was, it was a really great learning experience. And I remember I was terrible at training, like horrible at training people. So it took me a while. Like I knew how to train myself, but training other people is a lot difficult, like a lot more difficult. And co yeah, you realize that coaching people isn't about coaching how to do exercises. It's about coaching physical, like mental changes. Like it's not just about the physical, like getting them in there to work out was like 
a struggle sometimes. It's like mm. you got to schedule your appointments and they're going to cancel. And they've got all these reasons. They've got all these excuses. And I was like, damn, man, like coaching isn't even about training people. It's like training was the easy part. Training was the fun part. But man, it was hard changing behavior and hard mm. getting someone to change. So that was a learning lesson. And I thank God for 24 hour fitness because they taught me a lot. Like I was able to train a lot. Like they were feeding me clients and I, I was, I was doing pretty well with them, with, with my clients. And um, I just wanted to be a really good trainer. Like I loved helping people. I got two more certifications when I was working there, more advanced certifications um, through NASM. So I was really digging it. Like I loved helping people. I love helping people with their injuries. And it just, it turned into a passion while I was in college and I was in college. I, I was studying to be, I wanted to be a doctor. So I was going to all the pre-med classes in college, biology, mm. chemistry, biochemistry, organic chemistry, you know, mm. immunology, you know, radiation biology, like all that, all that interesting stuff for me is interesting. And I was like, Oh, I want to be a doctor. And you know, personal training was just kind of a side gig for me, but I ended up loving it. Like, like after two and a half, three years of training at 24 hour fitness, like I got a lot of great knowledge working with people. Like I understood how to change them. I had worked with hundreds of people by then and people were coming off blood pressure medication and people were, they weren't like depressed about themselves. Like their confidence was improving. Like all these cool things were happening that doctors say they can help with, but doctors, doctors really don't do anything really unless they're break, unless they're mending a broken bone. And I realized that as I was in school, I was like, man, I love training people. I was like, man, I don't see myself being a doctor anymore. Like, I'm doing stuff that's better than doctors. Doctors are given drugs for depression, and I'm curing depression through exercise. Doctors are given drugs for high blood pressure, and people are coming off these blood pressure. I'm like, why do I want to be a doctor? I'm like, what? Dude, oh, it's, it's all about the status, and, the, and oh, you're a doctor. But that shit didn't mean anything to me. Like, I didn't care about that stuff. So it was like, it was kind of a... A, a change and I was like what do I do from here I, I don't really know do I want to do I want to do this anymore do I do I want to go to school anymore and mm. I graduated college and I was like where do I go from here and I remember my dad my dad was like hey man you, you know you gotta get a job like you gotta get a real job I'm working at 24-hour fitness just ain't gonna do it <laughs> yeah, yeah. in, in my mind I'm like yeah you're right I'm like I get it like yeah working at 24-hour fitness I wouldn't <laughs> I, I, when I left 24 Hour Fitness, I was the top trainer as far as sales in the whole Southern California region. The top trainer as far as service. I was servicing the most sessions of all the gyms, of all 24 Hour Fitness. I was selling like 10K a month in training. And I was like, dude, I was like, if I could sell 10,000 a month in training, why not I make 10,000 a month instead of making uh. 1,500? You know, you know, busting my ass working 40 hours a week training, which is a lot. Like 40 hours a week, one-on-one -on -one training is exhausting. Like it's, you're dealing with like eight different people a day with eight different personalities and day eight different, like way hard. And it wasn't, it's, it was like, where do I go from here? I'm at the max. Yeah. Like I can't, like, where do I go from here? I'm like, my, my, so my dad was, he was right. He's like, what do I do? Mm. You know, I, so I remember he bought me a, a suit. Let me show you this real quick. Let me show you this uh, picture. Look at that suit right there. <laughs> short hair that, John. Short hair John. Yeah, looking, that, like, looking like a pup. Yeah, that was that was like that was actually a wedding for my uncle, like the summer after I graduated college. And that was my first time wearing that suit. And I think mm -hmm. one of the only times wearing that suit because my dad was like, you know, you gotta get a job. <laughs> you gotta you know, you, you got to look the part. Yeah, you got to look the part. You got to play the part. And, uh, you know, if you're looking like a chump, you know, you're not going to be successful. So mm. I, I put my resume out there, but I didn't get any bites. So I was like, what do I do from here? You know, like you just finished college. So you said you were applying for jobs. You were, what kind of jobs were you applying for? Dude, any, any job that I thought was, was useful. Like I was applying for like uh, jobs for biology, biotech. Mm. Um, Cause it's like, I got my degree in biology with, with, a with the prerequisites to go to medical school, but I didn't want to go to medical school. Like I was like, that's so expensive. I want to be in so much debt. And I just don't want to go that route right now. 
So I was just applying everywhere to even, even like regular, like Dick's Sporting Goods, like 24 hour fitness, mm. you know, any biotech company. And I think I did it for like a week and that was it. And I was all, I was already over it. And I was just like, I hate this. Like, what am I doing? And I was kind of stressed out. I was living on my own. And, uh, I had like no money in my bank. And I remember I had my rent. I was living downtown. My rent was like $1,400. And I think I had like $1,600 in my, in my bank. And I was like, dude, I don't want to spend all this money on my rent. Like this is the last month that I'm essentially going to be able to live because mm. you know, your groceries and you're paying for your bills. It was a grind. And, uh, I'm like, what the hell do I do? I'm stressed out of my mind. And my, like, I didn't want to go home to my parents' house. You know, I don't, I don't want to go home and move back home 200 miles away. It's like, like I built my life. I, I built a life in San Diego the past couple of years living here. And I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to move away. And with my tail between my legs and I couldn't do something and I couldn't survive. Mm -hmm. So, um, and this was when I was, you know, when I graduated college, I was working at 24. So I was still making income, but I wasn't able to make any means end. Like I, I wasn't able to do anything like barely, barely survive. Like I was still asking my parents, Hey, like, I don't know if I'll be able to, I don't know if I'll be able to survive this next month. So yeah. uh, it was like the weirdest opportunity. Like I had, I had been following uh, this guy online. He was like this fitness guy, this fitness business guy. And he was opening a franchise of group training, this group training company and group training was, it wasn't common like group training. All you had was uh was 24 hour fitness and those big box gyms doing like body pump dancing around you know with their microphone on <laughs> you know, how was that i did some group training so i know i know what it was like and yeah. i was like why i was like i don't want to do group training like i just didn't want to do that and uh so i was suffering because i was making no money and i was trying out and i was following this guy and he's like hey man do group training go all in and you know it's you're going to make more money in the long run and you're going to be able to help more people in the long run. Cause instead of servicing one person per hour, now you can talk and work with 15 people, 20 people an hour. And now you're going to help more people make a bigger impact. And I was like, yeah, but I don't know. Like I'm, I don't really like the whole group thing. It's kind of weird. Like everybody together. And I don't know. I was kind of insecure about it, but I was so desperate and I needed help. So he was offering this program where he could help you build a, business like a group training business from the ground up you know i'm like 24 years old 23 maybe 24 and super just ready to make some changes like i don't i i knew i didn't want to work at a company and sit, sit on my butt for eight hours a day like i wanted to move so i i signed up with this guy i think at that point i just moved out of my apartment because i wasn't able to Mm. live there anymore like I wasn't able to pay a rent so I, I it was actually the last month it was like a godsend the last month on my lease and I ended up living with my friend Justin for a couple months on his couch and he didn't charge me any rent and I was so grateful because I was able to save up some money yeah and I was like all right I'm gonna I'm gonna sign up with this guy this guy Bedros he's got this this fit body boot camp franchise he's starting this is back shoot 2010 and i was like all right i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna do this it was like a two thousand dollar down payment with a four hundred dollar a month commitment for five years that was what the business program was so it was a big commitment for me like yeah. two thousand dollars down think, plus 300 bucks a that. month that's like that's Dude, like I, little, that's like college tuition right there yeah i barely had money to pay the two thousand down and actually it was one nine, it was like nine, nine ninety nine and nine ninety nine like the next month. So I was able to break those payments up. Yeah. So I, I with my last pennies, I signed up with this guy because I was desperate. Like I don't like I needed something. And I wasn't about to move back home. So I was like, I'm just I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna sign up with this guy. So I signed up thousand bucks down. And then like that's when like the stress hit me. Cause I was like, damn, there goes a thousand bucks and now yeah. I gotta like now I gotta perform and go find a location, like he taught me how to find a location, like a gymnastics facility to sign up with because they usually don't have classes in the morning. It's like a bunch of kids, right? So I, they're only there in the evening when they're off school. So I was able to negotiate at least with this, with, with this company and start doing some sort of group training. So I took all my one-on-one -on -one clients and I was like, hey, 
let's let's do this group training thing. Mm-hmm. So it, that that's kind of how it started. You yeah, talking about you took your, your you took your one on one clients for twenty four hour fitness, where it's like, hey guys, I'm leaving, I'm leaving twenty four hour fitness. You guys want to follow me over to this gymnastics gym? Exactly, exactly. That's a leap of faith. That's a leap of faith. <laughs> so you left that you left that financial security at twenty four hour fitness, and now you're walking the realms of entrepreneurship right there. Totally, and it it it, it didn't really hit me yet because mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like still I was still making income right and yeah. I was like oh I'm gonna take all my clients so I'm gonna make all this money and I'm gonna, like I'm gonna be able to pay my bills like that was my main focus like I just want to pay my damn bills yeah <laughs> and uh wow I'm glad I did that I'm glad I made that decision because <laughs> with, with some sort of like I was fresh like I didn't know anything about entrepreneurship I didn't know about sales I didn't mm-hmm. know about marketing and wow, man, I got my ass handed to like whoops. Like I was losing clients. I, I wasn't able to get like get new clients in. So I was making less now than I was at 24 hour fitness on my own. Now I'm paying 400 bucks a month to this dude who I'm like, I'm struggling to, 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 to even pay that. Mm. So I'm like uber stressed. So for several months, like I, I, I'm just anxiety through the roof. Like I can't sleep. I, I'm not able to, I, I'm now in a worse position. And I remember, I remember I called my mentors, Bedros and Steve, cause we could call them. And uh, they were like, they were like online mentors that kind of had this online portal where you can like see all, all the things you needed to do to implement in order to start a business. Mm. So I, I wasn't doing those things. I was doing like maybe one thing, which is the training, but the 20 other things I needed to do, like the marketing and going. Yeah, I'm sure there was a long oh, list. Oh my God. There was a list of shit. And me being like 23, no discipline whatsoever on my end. I'm going out. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to stress relieve and I'm drinking on the weekends and mm. yeah, not good. So I remember calling them, Steve and Bedros and be like, Hey, I, I can't do this. Like this is this, I don't know if this is for me. And they were like trying to motivate me and they were saying like, yes, you can. You just need to do this, this, and this. Like you're not, you're not doing these things. Like you need to go out business to business. Like, but I'm like, you know, I'm already working 15 hours a day. And they're like, I don't care. Like get out there and go business to business and, and get out there and sit with new, new clients, get out lead boxes. And I'm like, Dude, I just don't have time. Like I can't do this. Like I was super stressed, super insecure. And they're like, you know what? Yeah, you're right. You're a loser. You're, you're not cut out for this business. I'm like, we, we only want to work with people who are going to, who are going to make shit happen. You're just, you're just kind of a pussy. And I was like, uh-huh. I was like, what? And then I'm like, yeah, man. Like, we're going to have real talk with you. This isn't like no fluffy business coaching. Like, we're going to be honest with you. Like, if you're going to be a little wimp, a little baby, then fine, drop out. We don't need you. Like, we'll, we'll replace you, loser, is what they were saying. And I was like, I kind of hit it. I struck a chord. Yeah, that must have hit you so hard. It hit me super hard, and it made my anxiety even worse. <laughs> I was just like, shoot, man, what do I do? Yeah, you're going to these guys expecting kind of like a – Pat on yeah. the back. Like a pat on the back. Hey, buddy, we're gonna we're gonna help you out. Yeah. Hey, okay, no. buddy, a lot of people go through the same no. thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Man, yeah. You yeah, straight. Oh, and that was my first gut check right there. Like, I'm like I'm borderline depressed because I've made less money than I have. I have no money coming in now. I'm losing clients, and what the hell do I do? Like. Mm. it was just a a super stressful situation Mm -hmm. and that was the point that was the point that was a turning point for me I was like I need to put I need to like step some games up like I need to start hustling even more and I I just decided I I, I just I need to put more work in and I need to cut out the fluff stop doing stupid stuff like stop drinking and stop going out Mm -hmm. and start focusing on my business on the weekend when it's like everybody's on the weekend everybody's partying on the weekend and they have their nine to five and they're doing their thing and I'm like shit I still gotta work 10 hours a day on the weekend 15 hours a day on the weekend so super stressful but I ended up just barely scraping by for several years actually for several years it was a struggle with me and I I didn't want to quit I, I didn't want to be a quitter and I didn't want to have to tell my dad at 25, 26 years old that I, I quit and I gave up and oh. I didn't want to have to tell people around me that I'm not a trainer anymore. Like all these, I, 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 I'm not that person. I don't want to be a quitter. Yeah. And so that really struck a chord with me when they called me those names because it was true. Like 
either I'm going to be a winner like that or I'm going to be a loser. And I decided just to take it to the next level from there and start hustling even more. And it still wasn't producing anything, but I just stuck with it because there was, I had no other option, man. I had no other option. And I wasn't about to cry to my mom and dad. I didn't want to be that person. Like I can't be weak. Like my brothers and sisters were doing fine. Like what the hell, man, what's wrong with me? Yeah. So at this point, at this point, did you have people in your ear telling you like, Hey, listen, John, shit's kind of tough right now. Maybe you should, you know, look to something else. Like maybe some family members or you You know, I I mean, you know, what's great. I didn't have a ton of haters, but you know what I did do? I found people that supported me. I found people that supported me because I heard the haters when I said I wanted to do this. When I said, Hey, I want to, I want to do this thing. Like my dad was like, you sure that's a good idea. And you know, you should just probably put your resume out there. I had a lot of people like, Oh, well, you know, did you read the contract that you signed? Make sure that you're doing this. And well, what if this happens? It's like, I already had that bullshit. So a, a good friend of mine, Justin, was I'm sure Andy you remember Justin but he was like a big supporter of me and we we hung out all the time and he would always support the gym always come in and help me out so he was always like hey dude just keep going just keep going so right then and there and my business mentors were big about that like surround yourself with winners like read self-help books like they were trying to help me on the psychological level like and then the business would come with it and that that helped a lot is my mom would call me and say hey how's everything going i'm like not so good and she's like keep going keep going mom was super supportive like i'm so grateful and my dad was actually supportive too he ended up he ended up being supportive and then justin so i had those guys like really supporting me in the corner because i didn't i didn't like talking about me struggling so i never brought it up i never i never told anybody that i was suffering nobody in the gym probably knew it but after several years of suffering like you could see like I was worn down. Like my, I was really negative in the gym, like cussing a lot at my clients, like just not happy because I just wasn't like after years of doing something, what the hell, man? Uh-huh. <laughs> Why not? Who's the payoff? <laughs> yeah. That, and that was, and that was years. You said you went like a year or so and you were barely making ends meet, but you attributed to that because you felt like you weren't putting in the work that your right. mentors were telling you to put, but now you feel like you're on track and you're, doing exactly what your mentors are telling you. And that's a couple of years after that point that you right. were still kind of just scraping by. Still scraping that by. Must, and yeah, that must have been so challenging for you. Super demoralizing. Mm. And each year that went by, it was just harder and harder. And there was always new challenges. And yeah, as we started to get more members, like the, the reason how we got members was you had to change the game. Like I changed like everything. Because I was like, something's not working too. Like we need to, we need to keep these guys. We need to keep them motivated. Because we, we get people who work off for a couple months and they leave. Work off for a couple months and they leave. And it was just like, dude, what am I going to do to keep these? So I just took the next level on service, man. I just started to text my clients a lot more. I started to like just be in their lives. I started emailing them weekly or a couple times a week. Like I'm sure you guys remember those. Like I started emails. Um, and I just started providing different value in the gym. Like we were doing like body weight stuff a lot of the time with very light weight, like tens and eights and fives. And like, that was all that we had. And so I started investing in the gym. Like I started investing in more equipment, heavier equipment. Actually, let me, let me, let me show you some pics. Actually, you're going to love this. (laughs) Let me show you, let me show you a pic of right, right. Fives, eights, and tens. You're running a nice little Pilates class in there, huh, buddy? Yeah, it was Pilates. So check this out, man. (laughs) This is one of my... (laughs) (laughs) This is one of the... This is like Halloween, like maybe the second or third year I started it. And... That's hilarious. That was, that was, that was the gym we started in. Let's see Here's like when people started coming in, like we, we started getting some people in. Look at the weights. Like we got a little bit of weight, you know? Yeah, that's a, that's, a pretty, that's, a, that's a lot of people in a class. Yeah. When and you, I, I, I was only running like two sessions a day though. Oh, okay. So this was like everybody cramped. We had like a 6 a.m. and a 7 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh-huh. And that, that was it. So this was after like several years of being in there. This was the, this was the size of the class. Oh, I finally got these weights. When I finally got these weights, oh man, I started stepping stepping up because everybody was doing group training mm. back then. Everybody was doing group training. 
and you had to differentiate. Like, how do you differentiate and survive? Because like everybody's doing group. Oh, it, it's even better to do it outside because then you get to be outside. That was the biggest objection. Oh, I want to go do this one outside. Or, you know, I like this other boot camp because, you know, we do things by the bay and it's prettier. And I want to work out. I don't want to be in the gym. That's why I do group training. And I was like, damn, man, I don't want to, like, I don't even know what I do. Like, so I had all these objections I wasn't used to having as a one-on-one -on -one trainer because a one-on-one -on -one trainer objections were way different than uh -huh. group training. So group training was harder for me to get somebody committed to because they didn't see that. You want to show you show them that value. So we started implementing like this fitness test. Oh my God. Let me, let me show you the fitness test. Uh, I don't know where it is. Um, but we started implementing this fitness test. Actually, here it is. Let me show you, let me show the screen here. Andy, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna love this one. Andy. Here was, here, here was the fitness test. Okay, this was 2013, <laughs> 7, 16, this was a picture. You guys see that? Yep. Oh my gosh. We did a mile run, chin-ups, push-ups, sit-ups, burpees, wall sit, plank, and side plank. That was our fitness test. And the goal was to see progress. Mm. Like those are, your, those are your standards to, to yeah. see how strong. These were our standards, per se. Right. And just doing the small things, I realized, made your clients really appreciative, like measuring them. Like, I remember I was measuring them when a lot of other trainers wouldn't measure their clients. So I, like, I started doing the things that other trainers never did. And, like, that was a big takeaway. Like, I would meet with people and be like, oh, how's your training going? Well, I'm working with a trainer. Well, what's the trainer doing? Oh, you know, just working me out. I'm like, okay, well, what are your measurements? So, I don't know. Well, how much weight have you lost? Well, I don't know. Like, how much strength have you gained? Oh, I don't know. Like, they would, like. 99% of people would tell me all the same stuff. So I'm like, dude, we just got to do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like start measuring clients, start tracking progress, start staying in contact with my, to give them better service in a group training than one-on-one -on -one training. So that was the goal was to give better service than a one-on-one -on -one trainer does. Cause then you can keep them and train them for, for however long until they get to their goals. Because the, the goal is to get you to your goal, the client. Right. And if you're measuring them and showing them progress, you're keeping them accountable. Right. You're, you're taking their progress, physical progress, like how fast you can run a mile. So, so those were the small progressions that we did to elevate the, um, the value of the program because no other trainer was measuring, no other trainer was tracking. And I remember I'll brag about that. I'm like, you guys are getting measured. You guys are getting better training than a one-on-one -on -one trainer who's going to pay 80 to a hundred dollars per hour for and you guys are only paying a small monthly sum of whatever. I think back then I was charging one thirty-seven or something like that. And people like that's that's how we I changed the game because like I wanted to build a, a, a community of people who wanted to be better, fitter, and stronger. And by having those added heavier weights, by not just doing a body weight boot camp by the beach, you got to give clients way better results. And the group training was a blast because people would work together. And I ended up absolutely loving it compared to one-on-one -on -one training. One-on-one -on -one training just what was fun. It was good for the people who needed it. But the group oh. training took the gym to the next level. And when you, when you challenge them with a fitness test and when you challenge them with measurements, they get better like way better because if you know you're going to get measured, you know, you're going to psychologically be a little bit better. Like if you're, if you know you're going to measure your mile time or your push ups, like, and then seeing that progress, I, I like the top 30% of the class of athletes loved it. And the bottom, like 70% of people like hated it though. Mm. But like that first fitness evaluation, that one day we had every six or eight weeks, it was a one day test. That was it. And I remember some people absolutely loved it and some people hated it, but it was okay because you needed that challenge. And the ones that loved it excelled really well and they got better and better. And that's the kind of community that you want. You want, you want a community that wants to get better when other gyms and, and boot camps weren't doing anything. They were just putting them through some workout. And, and that was, that was the other thing that needed to change. Like there needed to be coaching, like there needed to be technique because a lot of these other boot camps by the beach and all these other boot camps that were popping up like boutiques like in in facilities like ours are still not coaching form i was blown away like i meet with these people and they had like three other trainers before and they can't even do a proper squad or like their push-ups are junky 
And then they're like, oh, my shoulder hurts. I'm like, well, no kidding. You weren't doing it right for the three trainers. And I was blown away. Mm. And I was like, this, like the gym was stepped up sequentially. Like first, like the indoor gym was awesome. Then a little bit of added weight and always about form and talking about form and that kind of evolved as I became a better trainer. And then introducing more challenging acts. Like we never really did deadlifts. We never did cleans or snatches because those were too complicated. And then adding in those and coaching on the technique has been, has been amazing. And now to now look at the gym, it's, we're no longer in that facility. You know, we have our own gym and where we have our, our, our month long fitness evaluations, which you guys absolutely love. Like it went from like 70% hating that fitness test to like a hundred percent loving it. Like everybody loves seeing those numbers go up and it's a blast and seeing the gym mold from like, I'm just a trainer that wants to make ends meet to someone now it's like, Oh wow. We've got this awesome community of a bunch of warriors who are kicking butt, getting stronger. Like, that's about the program. Like no other gyms are doing this, what we're doing now. I no other gyms are doing a month long fitness progress evaluation <laughs> where, where you see progress in every way, shape or form, where you're getting measured regularly, where you're getting information about nutrition. It's like blowing the value out of the water is, is, has been the number one changing game factor for me in this business is you got to differentiate. And if you don't differentiate, you're going to die. Like if I had just done body weight workouts by the beach, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have gone anywhere. Like th th there's only so much you can do with body weight and to mm. progress, to progress somebody to like mastery is you have to challenge them physically. So adding in different weights, getting in squat racks, like that has always been the best, right, Josh? I mean, you know, it. like yeah. you can't just oh. have somebody do body weight stuff. hundred percent. I mean, you get if you want to take yourself to the next level you got to start lifting weights and you got to start doing some other things that are going to challenge the body I think it's really good for people to hear the story of fitness forward because it's not like you nailed it off on the first try it wasn't like you were destined for success and fitness forward no matter what would have happened you would have made it it was like in the beginning you failed and you failed hard right and your back was against the wall and you really felt like uh is, is this is this for me? Is this really going to pay off? You know, reevaluated some things, kept a po positive influences around you that kept you on track and gave it to you real. Like, you know, your mentor is Bedros. And it's so funny that you're saying Bedros because now he's like a household name in the fitness industry. But when you were working with him, it was like, he was just also getting started. Correct. If, right. Correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, shoot, Bedros, Bedros was my age or a little bit older when he started his franchise and mm. I remember his down payment was 2,400 bucks a month commitment. Now it's 30,000 down payment <laughs> with a thousand dollars a month with a percentage of your revenue. <laughs> so, oh, <my> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I was going to say, so you were, fa you were failing in the beginning, started implementing more strategies that brought you to a certain point until you quote unquote failed again. You realize, all right, I got to do more to take my business to the next level. I'm kind of capped off. Then you implemented another strategy through experience and through, you know, molding to the different challenges you were facing, like the different objections you were getting, uh, elevate or elevating the fitness test that you were getting, the, the different customer service strategies you're implementing so you can be more in touch with your clients and giving them more value. And then that, that leveled up to a new strategy that you implement, implemented the next year. So every year you were, you're putting in new things to take the business to the next level. And I think that's what people need to hear is that you didn't just nail it right off the back. Just all right, John Chapetta, fitness forward, you know, successful group training facility from day one. Now this was a process which has been 10 years now or more. And even more than that, because before you started fitness forward, you were working at 24 hour fitness where you had to learn a different set of skills that brought you to the point of being able to so it's the journey exactly. man it's the journey that got you to this exactly point. it's been very and good the experience. journey yeah that journey is stressful man that journey was challenging and it's gonna make you cry at night sometimes <laughs> and people are gonna you know you're gonna have two people in life you're gonna have the bedroses and the people who say oh no it's okay just quit mm -hmm. i'm freaking grateful for bedros and steve for giving it to me hard and you see it in my coaching style to you guys
Like, like if you guys need to hear the truth, I'm going to give it to you, whether you like it or not. And the truth hurts sometimes because like, I didn't want to hear that truth that I was sucking, that I was being lazy. And like, I, I was just not doing things I needed to get. I didn't want to hear that, but shoot, I didn't realize that's what I signed up for. Mm. And, um, I, I'm grateful that I was, I kind of went in that situation, not knowing the challenges. I'm grateful that I didn't know that it was going to be so hard and that I didn't know that I was going to go through like depression and really unhappy periods. Like those guys, like Andy, I'm so grateful that you've been with us for so long because you've seen me down in a bad spot, man. Angry. You've seen me upset. You've seen me come in, probably smell alcohol in my breath from the night before. Like that's not good, man. That was, that was stress, anxiety, and like depression because I wanted to make something happen that wasn't working. Yeah. And it was just a year by year process. Like stick with it, stick with it, stick with it. And, yeah. and finally, like I took, I took my first vacation when I was 29. That was like nine years after I, or that was what not nine years after that was like five six years after i started the business my first vacation ever that i was able to pay for like yeah. for more than like oh it's christmas break and i'm gonna go home and see my mom and dad no it's like i freaking went somewhere for three weeks finally <laughs> it's like <laughs> a lot loose and to, yeah. and to bring it back to the beginning of your story you said that bedros puts you on a five-year plan so now yeah. it's five years later where you really started reaping the fruits of your labor five years that's a long time like if you tell someone that in order for you to get to your goal it's going to take you minimum five years for a lot of people right. that's too long that's demoralizing they're like uh well maybe it's not for me if it's going to take me that long which five years is a short period of time in the grand scheme of things in the grand scheme of you know all the things you want to do with fitness forward all the things you want to do with the business right. but hey guys that's like that's what it takes it's that investment and just getting a little bit better every single year, applying new things, making a ton of mistakes, going through a ton of challenges and overcoming obstacles that is going to make you a stronger person. John said earlier that he was becoming a better businessman through growing as a person, you know, reading different self-development books, you know, leveling up himself. And in turn, that was leveling him up as a business owner as a trainer, you know, working on different things and getting better in different aspects of his life and having to go through those challenges like anxiety and depression and at an all time low, pretty much getting kicked while he was down by his mentors in a positive way, of course, right? Them giving it to him so straight that he, he's like, I mean, I kind of feel like quitting at this point. That hit me pretty hard, you know, the way that your mentors were talking to you, but that's exactly what you needed at that point in time to elevate you to that next level. Right. So that's an inspiring story, man. Fitness Forward is, hey, we're still growing, baby. We ain't done yeah. yet. I mean, shoot, let's talk about like what we're doing now. I mean, yep. that 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 was where we're at now. Like we're at this this coaching level that's already superior to a lot of other gyms, and you guys can see it. Like, go to another gym and just work out there, and like see the level of technique that you see and the level of relationship that your your coach is building with you, and it's not out there. There's a lot of junky trainers out there. And with this company, like that's, that's not how I want to do it. That's never how we want to do it. Like we want to help you guys get to your goals. And when you get to your goals, like the results are, they speak louder than anything else. Like, Oh, what do you do? Like, Oh, let me tell you about what I've done. I finished. Well. Like you guys know all your numbers. Mm -hmm. Like I bet you, yeah. if you talk to anybody, they wouldn't know anything about their numbers. Yeah. No I, how long I, I sit down with tons of people one-on-one -on -one, or even, people I talk about fitness to just, you know, if they reach out to me on social media and I'm talking to them and I end up getting on a call or anything like that. I say, okay, what are your, what are your stats pretty much? What are your numbers? What are this, you know? And they're like, Oh, I don't know. Okay. Well, how, how long, how, how fast is your mile? Uh, I don't know. Um, okay. What's your bench press? I don't know. Can you do a push up? How many push ups can you do? Uh, I don't know. Like they, they don't know the important details about their which you know the devil is in the details if you want to take it to the, the next level you got to know all those little things about yourself because we're talking about your personalized fitness goals and that was a game changer or that's a game changer for your fitness journey is knowing exactly where you stand and then you can get a plan and a, a specific plan on how you can get to your very very individualized goals right because you realize that being in the fitness industry for so long weight loss is the most boring goal 
Mm. Like when comments, someone comes to you and says they want to lose weight, I'm like, all right, well, what else do you want to do? Like there's a thousand other things you can focus on. Like there's different metrics you can track. And as somebody starts to train, they, they still want to lose weight, but they love these other aspects of fitness. And that's what is inspiring to people who come in. It's like, wow, like, how do you bench so much? Or how do you squat so much? Or how do you run so fast? That's like, well, we track it and we test you. And that's such a game changer. And that was what we realized, like the fitness test take, takes you to that next level. And the progress evaluations each, each quarter of the year, they show you that. And I realized that people want to see that. Like you guys who are training here, they want to see that. It's not just about the physical stuff. Oh, I've lost weight or, or, you know, I want to tone up. Mm. No, I want to get ready for my wedding. Mm. Such boring goals, such boring goals. It's one moment of your life you want to get ready for. Like, how do you inspire greatness? So it's that greatness is inspired through those, those, those challenges and, and showing people their progress. And that's how you develop a great person. And like, and being with them, like, like you coaching your clients one-on-one and in the gym, like, you know, like Josh and I know everything about every one of you guys in this room. Every one of you that comes in the session, Josh and I know about you. We know, we know what your strengths are, what your weaknesses, and that's what coaching is. And we wouldn't know those strengths or weaknesses if we didn't track them. Right. And that's how we develop athletes in here. That's what we want to do. We want to take you guys out of your world and put it in a world where you can grow. Like, cause sometimes you're in a world where your boss is yelling at you, your kids are mad at you, you're not cooking the right foods, you know, you, you don't feel good about where you're at. You or me getting kicked on the ground, and it's like sometimes you need to get put in a world where you're built up and showing how good you are and strong you are, and that's kind of what this gym is. Mm. Like we bring you into this world, and I push you like Bedros pushed me, and Josh pushes you and makes you go sprint and do farmers carries. Like, oh, you want those results? Well, get your butt out there and do it. Mm. And you develop a, a, a battle-hardened attitude towards getting those results. Like you just do it. Like mm. you, if we told you guys to do something, you would just do it because you know through progression like i could do it i can do it and we want to we want to build that in your lifestyle like we want to build that i can do it like instead of going to work and get your butt kicked or some it's like all this negative stuff around you and we want to build that up and build a strong character Mm -hmm. so that you guys are super successful in the gym and that that tailors to outside the gym because man i know how like i know how much of an impact the fitness had on me man i was a small insecure little kid with no friends and it totally changed me seeing the changes in me and seeing those changes in you guys it it gives me chills you know like it makes me feel really good that you guys are here and progressing and we got a lot of great things coming up for you guys like we're changing the program again just like we're we're adding on to it rather we're not we're just adding on to the greatness like we're going to keep doing the fitness test but we're going to be adding in this new level up program that you guys are going to absolutely love yeah and we're going to i was was making a i was making a joke to john we got to keep leveling up the program because you guys are getting strong as fuck you guys are getting in shape your goals are getting greater than like maybe at first it was like oh well i want to lose five pounds like it's like a small goal a short-term goal but now it's like no i want my squat to be better i want to be the best olympic lifter i can be i want to be a faster runner and i want to be able to run for longer and i want to lower my body fat percentage and i want to build some you guys' goals are getting just through the roof so we have to elevate the program we have to make the gym we have to make the gym program better for you guys because you guys are just getting beast right and i love seeing that and we talked john was talking about how hard we push you guys in the gym and you guys are just you answer the call right away. You always answer that bell. All right, we're going to do far- – I remember I made a joke at 5 a.m. I was like, all right, guys, we're going to do a farmer's curry, but we're going to use 70% of our body weight just as a joke. And the 5 a.m. class walked over to the rack and grabbed 70%, like no questions asked. And I was like, oh, now I'm messing around. And it was funny, but they were just ready for it, right? They were ready to put in that work. And it's because you have that mindset to put in that work that – when you see the result, like you guys are putting in the consistent work inside the gym, and then we have the fitness evaluation and you dominate those PRs, right? That just, it just adds more fuel to the fire and want to work. And we throw more challenges at you guys. And your mindset isn't to avoid challenges, it's actually to seek them out. Like we flip the switch where it's like, no, I want to do those. I want to do that heavy squat. I want to burn out this sprint. I want to run faster and longer and lift heavier weights because I know if I put in that consistent work, not only am I going to see the physical result, like my body's going to change, 
I'm going to hit new PRs when, it, when we do the fitness test. But you're getting that internal change because you, you become a person that not only wants to crush goals inside the gym, which is a small part of it. Like you guys are coming to work out for just an hour. It's a very small investment as when, when I'm saying when it comes to time. Right, but you got another 23 hours in the day where you become the kind of person that wants to dominate in the other aspects of your life. And I make a joke, or I, I, not a, really a joke, I say that fitness forward is less about the fitness and more about the forward. Meaning you're trying to move forward in every aspect of your life. You want to make more money? You got to move forward and put through the things that you need to do to make more money. You want to improve your physique or improve relationships in your life with different people or it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what it is. You have the goal, you have the mindset in your head that, all right, I'm gonna challenge myself in this aspect so I can move forward. So I can get 0.1% better every single day. And that's the power of pushing yourself in the gym. And that's, a pro that's the power of you know, tracking where you're at and challenging yourself in different ways inside the gym. And it applies just to so many other things in your life. And that's why. That's why the fitness pro, fitness forward program has been so special. Right. That next level. And, you know, pushing yourself to that next level of fitness always translates mm. to life on the outside, outside of that gym. Like I love, you, know, you can make so many comparisons to fitness and other aspects of your life. It's like, you want to improve something in fitness, focus on that one thing. Like you want to get better bench. Okay. Add, add five pounds to your bench every week. Mm. You know, a small amount, those small changes. Oh, you, you want to read 20 books this year, read five to 10 pages a day. That's it. It's not about reading a whole, it's not about reading for hours and hours and hours. It's about make those small, the small gains in your own personal stuff. It's like, that's why fitness, it's so translatable because you can see those small changes manifest in your, in your life. Like each time we do the fitness and progress change, like, I love seeing you guys get so amped up. Like, wow, my bench press went up, my squat went up, my deadlift is up. Like, that stuff translates. That excitement in the gym translates to excitement outside the gym. You're talking yeah. to people about it. You, you have more energy. Okay. You just have more vitality. Like, your, your bosses will notice that vitality. Your family and friends notice that vitality. And that's infectious. And you're going to attract success in your life through that. That's why fitness is so important to me and, and upgrading this program on a yearly basis from new equipment to all the cardio stuff we got and conditioning to the new, new program, this new level up program where we're going to take you through just every avenue of fitness and you can grow in whichever way you want. We have like, we have just trees of growth where you can grow. Okay. You want to learn more about Olympic moves. These are the things you have to do in sequence. Okay. You want to learn more about losing body fat. These are the things you have to do in sequence. You want, you want to be a better runner, work on this mechanics, 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 and then boom, like that, that's going to be so much fun seeing you guys progress and seeing where you progress. So yeah. get excited about that when we get back to the gym, because it's going to be, it's going to take you guys to that next level again. And that's what it's about, baby. Leveling those, up. Right. Those results to show are build your confidence and just build you up as a person. Mm. And that's what, that's what Josh and I are here to do. And I'm so glad that you guys come in this community and build each other up. Like I love when you come in and even supporting your, supporting your fellow members by coming to this group and showing your face mm. and like that consistency matters. And then when you get back in the gym and I see you guys pushing each other and saying, Hey, you know, try a little more weight or Hey, you can go faster. Like that's the Bedros in your ear. Like, Hey, get out there and do it. <laughs> and you're going to get my what you want. One of my favorite parts about the gym, and this even applies to I me mean, now that we're outside of the gym, we're doing this whole Zoom, we're on our Zoom endeavor. But my favorite parts about the gym is when I come in to the 5 a.m. class, it's like 4.50 and the members start walking in and they're all talking with each other, right? They're asking about how their family's doing or, you know, maybe some person has an injury and they're you know, someone looking out for someone, hey, how's that injury feeling? Or, oh, you ready to hit this workout? Oh, I'm so sore from yesterday's workout. You guys are talking about things. And when I'm, when I'm looking on the Facebook group every single morning, I open up Facebook and see all the notifications of you guys posting in that group and communicating with each other and talking about your goals and sharing your goals and sharing the different challenges you're going through. And then, you know, some person gives you advice on how to get through this challenge. That's what I live for. I live for that community factor of fitness forward, watching you guys 
get stronger in so many different aspects, but not get stronger and it's just easier for you, right? Like, oh, I'm just hitting PRs and it's easy. Or I'm going through life and it's easy. You guys are getting stronger by going through real life challenges that some people, hey, they're just not fortunate enough to be able to push through that. You know, maybe they don't have the right support system or, you know, maybe they have a lot of self-limiting beliefs. But seeing this group, seeing Fitness Forward expand through you guys, the community, which makes it Fitness Forward what it is, you know, that's what I live for. That's why I became a coach is that I love seeing the growth of people and people working together. You know, I'm a, I'm a sports guy. I used to play football and that's what I loved the most, most about sports was the team and fitness forward has really been developed into a team. And that's how, that's how we want to keep it is like, guys, you guys are pretty much family. Can't be any closer than fitness forward in these zoom workouts and, and the fitness forward community on Facebook. Like I love seeing that guys. And it's only going to get better. This level up program is going to make you guys even more beast. Like we got some big things and I'm going to say here, I'm going to say here, John's already said it. Yeah. I don't think anybody in San Diego is going to be providing what we're going to be providing in the next six months to a year to three years to five years until our heart stops with these new things we're applying to fitness forward. So that's right. Guys, guys, I'm really excited. It's going to be a great, it's going to be a great addition. Heck yeah. So thank you guys for coming in. You know, get excited about this new new journey of your fitness. And you guys are gonna love what we got for you. We're gonna keep doing these these podcasts. We're gonna keep doing the posts in the group. Like that's that's how we're also upgrading. Like these videos aren't gonna stop. You know, right. we're gonna still put up videos for you to do on your own workouts if you can't make it into the gym. Like that's another level. Like we're not gonna stop these. Like I know a lot of people are gonna stop doing these things when when we get back to normal. But we're gonna keep providing you guys value. We're, we're gonna keep- do a lot of talks, and we're gonna keep you guys up to date on the like the latest stuff. Mm-hmm. Hey guys, it looks like we have a a few minutes here. We were planning to talk for the hour. This this hour goes by fast. Like John and I were talking about it the last podcast we did, but it goes by quick. We're talking and the hour flies by. We got a few minutes here. If anyone has any questions or um, Give me definitely comments, yeah, any comments. And guys, if you have any questions or you have an idea of what you want to hear for another podcast or anytime, you just post. You post in the Facebook group. You can message John and I individually, and we're here for you guys. Like I am, how can I be of service? Is my mindset right? So any questions you guys ever have, send them through. We can have a nice little Q&A right now. All right. What up, Caitlin? What up, Andy? So uh, you've been teasing the changes that are uh, that you have planned that you're going to be implementing. And I was wondering if there's anything you can tell us yet. So what, what, what we're going to start doing is we're going to start shooting videos on what we plan on doing in the gym until we get to the gym. Like, obviously we're not in the gym, but we're going to have this sheet. I'm I'm still designing the PDF for it. And it's going to have different trees where you could work towards a certain goal at Mm. the end, like a muscle up over here or like, like, like doing cleans over here and what technique you have to work towards. Or even, even if you want to gain muscle or lose body fat, we're going to have different skills that you can follow in progression to lose weight, like different tasks you need to do. So it's going to be super goal oriented. Like, you know, exactly what step comes next so that you know exactly what you need to work towards to get your goal. Like if you want to improve your running mechanics, like these are the four things you need to be working on in your running. So Mm -hmm. it's just going to be like, it's, it's almost like a game of just Mm -hmm. how much you know and learn. And at that, at different points of your skills, like you, you're learning different skills like awesome moves or technique about something like muscle ups Mm. or butterfly pull ups. And you're learning different progressions around that too. So it's not just like a random, Oh, let's do archer pull ups. Well, how exactly do you get to it if you don't know how to do it or how exactly do you need it? What, what steps exactly do you take to do the cleans better? Or what do you need to do to work towards a muscle up exactly? And how much should you be doing? And so it'll be a really fun way for you guys to track your progress on a day-to-day basis instead of just a quarterly basis. So we'll have those fitness evaluations quarterly, and then we'll do progressions for you. And we're going to have different, like, 
levels where you can like reach a certain level like level one you have to know these skills and level two you have to know these skills and you have to test out of the level like do a certain workout in a certain time period or whatever with with the weight requirements so it'll be really fun for you guys it'll be more engaging so um you can have each of you guys can be developed even more differently like you guys all have strengths and you can like you can like pick where you want to focus on like oh if i want to focus on my deadlifts i'm gonna do this skill tree mm. and do this these tasks so you guys are gonna have a lot more targeted yeah, and it's gonna help you be it's gonna be help you guys become more complete athletes because let's just john just alluded to it we have all different strengths and weaknesses i could be a level three in running right off the back like oh i know how to do these skills and you're already leveled up pretty fast but then wow i'm a level one in olympic lifting maybe i need to get that up now we have a step-by-step process like getting a getting a piece of furniture from ikea and it comes in the box and has all the pieces it has step one you need to do this first and then step two you need to do this to put this together and then step three and step four until you have that complete dresser that's really what the level up program is it's giving you guys exact step-by-step protocol to get to whatever fitness goal that you have right right whatever strength exercise running nutrition so many different categories that we're working on Right. Because that's, that's another thing you realize in the fitness industry is like you're training, but you, your, your coach doesn't have the time. If you're training in a group or even a one-on-one doesn't have the time to explain to you what you're doing and give you that structure. Mm -hmm. So having some sort of map that you can follow and train through and be coached through is going to really elevate your guys' knowledge. So when you leave the gym, you don't just forget the things you do, but you have a structure of, Oh, that's what I did last week. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to fill that out. Like I just completed this and obviously we're going to be coaching you through the whole way. So it'll be super fun. And we're going to shoot, we're going to probably focus as a gym on one aspect during different parts of the year so that you guys can get through a lot of it or learn about it. So it'll be really fun and engaging. We'll shoot videos about them and put them in this group as well. So it's going to be uh it's going to be the next thing, man. And nobody's doing it in San Diego. And that's, that's why I want to stay ahead of the game, man. You got to, you got to innovate. Otherwise you die, you know? <laughs> Thanks, so thank Scott. you guys for coming in. We got our cooking show coming up in two minutes. So I'm about to head downstairs and go right into our cooking show. Thank you guys wow. for coming and we're going to post this. That's a solid Saturday right there. Yeah. Solid Work out. Saturday you know, fitness forward, fit talk, or excuse me, J talk podcast. And now you guys got a cooking show. What are you guys cooking? Yeah. We are doing pancakes today. Healthy pancakes. Adriano's got some bomb pancakes. So we're going to go over that. I think we, we did French toast because you, Josh, we know you love French toast last week. Oh, yes, I do. We did some tacos one week. We did another dessert another week. So now we're doing some Pancakes for all you breakfast lovers. All right. Ready? Thank you so much. Thanks for coming in, guys. You guys can stay on or off because I'm just going to go downstairs. All righty. Sound good? Sounds good. Thanks a lot, John. Yes.